All right, guys, so I'm going to talk a little about hard surface here, but more on the organic side. So we've been uh, talking about sculpting. Um, I'll be posting the part two of the sculpting here in a bit. Um, but I want to talk about those that don't want to use any kind of sculpting tools. I'll show you how to approach high poly modeling and um, how to do that in Maya particularly. Uh, for one, let's say we want to work, make a rock. So I'll go ahead and uh, just make a simple cube. I like to start it simple so you can actually control its environment, exactly what you want to do with it. We'll go and split this guy up a bit. So go in here and you'll see me navigate here. And uh, we can make the division uh, 2, 2, and 2. There we go. And with that, now we can actually shape this guy how we want. Now you can go a little bit higher if you want to. But what we're going to do is do this little me method. <laughs> I can't say it methodically. <laughs> we're going to go in here and think about what we want to do and how we want it to look. Now it's good to use reference. In this case, I'm just going to make it. But having reference it keeps you on point, makes you, allows you to focus on a particular look and feel. So you see what I did just now, I went from the top down and I grabbed each point and I scaled them in. From here, I can go in here and change some of the uh, shape and maybe give it a little bit more of a drop off control. And uh, so it kind of has a little more erosion to it. And it's looking a little more like a tree right now, but uh, like a stump like we did last time. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same concept and we're gonna try to add a little bit more believability to this guy. I'm gonna scale that down. I'm gonna extrude him once, pull him out. Oh, let me make sure I watch what I'm selecting. My bad. I don't normally work with back face calling because uh, I forget to turn it off here. But in this case, we'll grab that guy. There we go. And extrude. Doo -doo. Click on here, scale that down. Make sure I grab the right scale. Click on just one of the squares, you get the uh, access to the scale point. And now we can go in here and grab some of these vertices, hit the W key, and we can start shaping this guy a little bit more like a rock so he isn't so um, uniform. He's very symmetrical starting out here. So we're gonna change it a little bit, pull up a little bit uneven. Grab this guy here. Grab these points over here, pull that out. Pull that out just a little bit. You can see we already have a simple shape to this rock. Now what I can do too, if you want to see what he looks like smooth, just hit the three key. You can see we have a pretty definite rock. And what this three key does, it allows us to get a preview of what our shape's going to be if it, a smooth was run on it. But let me show you we can get some extra hyper detail. So I'm going to move him over. And uh, for one, we don't want him to look like he's been cut with a lightsaber on the top of him. So we'll lift that out. But let's actually get some really cool detail. Like we're going to cut with a purpose. So to do that, we're going to use the uh, interactive uh, split tool. I don't mind this guy. Some people complain about him. I do like the other one a lot. but. This one isn't too bad. You just have to know how to use it. Hit enter. It works pretty much the same. The old one used to have it so you at the bottom you could see the percentage of how much you were in, on that edge, which I thought was kind of nice. And uh, what I'm doing here is just adding some extra detail to get some believability. Now, anytime you want to push in a seam or an area on an object, you got to make sure you cut like I'm cutting right here. So you have an equal division. So if I did want to push this in, I can literally go in here and grab my edge. And now I can push this in if I wanted to. And I can have a nice little drop off in between. And you can change the silhouette a little bit. Look like a rock's been cut into. Almost like a sock monkey. So we'll go in here and we can add a few more edges. Insert edge loop. Make another one down here. We can do one more here, here, over here, all right, and one at the top, just to make things a little more interesting. So we got this shape here, and we got some divisions. Again, you can move things around, and one way to move things around, if I go to edges, hit the W key here, grab this for a second, you can also slide on edge. This is a really nice, this allows me to middle mouse drag and slide this edge if I wanted to. 
I can even do the same thing for this guy if I want to slide that down make that crease a little bit smaller I can do that and uh, if I also wanted to I can also go in here with the faces that I did select I can now extrude this if I wanted to scale it down just a little bit and really make this look like a rock's been cut into and I can even put, pull that in if I wanted to a little bit now that looks like somebody cutting into that rock but the cool thing about this now we got a lot of edges we can play with and again if I need to I can slide these edges down the way if I wanted my finger on the middle mouse button to slide them down. These are harder to unwrap, but it still can be done. We're not going to get into unwrapping in this hard surface uh, series. We go into that on my other videos, which you watch, which talks about unwrapping uh, models. Let's go to the object mode. What we're going to do, I'm going to hit the hot box here, and I'm going to go to my, uh, we have edit um, mesh, but instead of edit mesh, we're not going to use this guy. We're going to actually go to our sculpting tool which is kind of nearby the good brother under mesh and we're going to go to sculpt geometry tool I keep my finger at the B key to lift them up a little bit now this is Maya's little generic sculpting tool and you can use it it's trying really hard to be or work like some of the other tools out there but we can smooth areas if you want to now mine smooth is a little strong so we'll lower that max displacement a bit you can also mirror under stroke you can turn on reflection so I'm gonna um, I can push or pull if I want so I can pull this out a little bit it can need to undo for a second and lower that just a tad And what this does, this makes this thing look a little bit more believable as a rock, so it doesn't look so static and don't have those square lines that we have. And with those areas that we pulled out, we can go in here and smooth it out too. So this is a smooth, there's also a relax, and relax, what that does, it actually relaxes your vertices. And if you don't want it so strong, you can lower your max displacement. So it's just subtle or at least subtler you can also mess with opacity so if I want to lower this this also can allow you to lower things a little bit all right so we got like a little rock there you can see what it looks like if you hit the three key ah mr. rock looks like he's got a mouth and do one um so this guy's really slow on my tolerance here. Max displacement slow. Put my seam tolerance back up again. There we go. So that's a little bit more what we're looking for. And we can go to smooth to smooth it out. Now notice smooth isn't so harsh and strong as average vertices. And this allows us to maybe control the environment a little bit more. There you go. So we got like a little rock there. You can hit the three key to see what he looks like. So whenever you cut into pieces of your rock or you want a distinct look, you can definitely kind of end it here because otherwise if it goes all the way around, that's really not helping anybody and it's not doing anything for your uh, object or environment. So when doing that, it's just really, uh, you got to, you know, think methodically when you cut into items and objects. I'm going to, oops, my bad. Let me double click again. I'm going to deselect the outer part of these. The outer part of these edges. And I can use this edge. I can start maybe pulling them in a little bit, pulling them down. Get kind of that cool type of look right there. Pretty cool. And then finally, we can go in here. And if you want to smooth it out, you can actually go in here, go to average vertices. And this will smooth out the whole thing. 
So I'm going to lower this to like two, and you hit average, and it'll actually give a nice even distribution of your edges. And hit the G key if you want to do it again. It's actually pretty good, not too bad. So you can get multiple different types of rocks in here if you want. So that's a quick way of how to make rocks. Now again, you don't have to cut through them like this. There's a lot of things you can do, and we did use the deformer again on other projects. And this one will just keep this deformer super simple. Actually, even more simple than that. We'll do. Uh, and uh, we use this for some of our modeling in the past, and you can again use it in the lattice. Definitely can use it for rocks and other items. Wireframe on shaded. You can actually see how he's reacting. I can give it a slant if I wanted to. Grab it in the middle and move it up a little bit. And you can have multiple rocks. And then from here you can start cutting with a purpose. And it's a quick tool. There's also soft selection if you want to use that. Um, I don't use it as much because I do like the ultimate control of uh, the lattice where I can do point by point and I can methodically grab certain areas on my object. And soft selection actually works pretty well. You can see me pull on there and it has a nice little drop off. And you can control the drop off on this object if you go into your attributes. You actually can see how much strength your drop off is going to have. And this works a little bit like Photoshop's curve tool. It uses these variables between strength based on the little ramp curve here. And you can see if we lower it, we can lower the uh, strength here. We can raise it up. You'll see the hot spot increase. You can even move some of these over. So I can move it over and you'll see that the hot spot can be scattered more or have a nice even drop off. So it's actually pretty good. Its defaults aren't too bad. I actually like them. Not too shabby. But it's all up to you how you want to uh, distort this guy. And these S's will stick around. So just keep that in mind. And uh, you can increase your drop off or decrease it by moving your your uh, you have a little uh, secondary displacement here that allows you to control the influence away from the from the area that you um, selected. So we can actually move it one way or the other, and it's basically called your fall off center. So we're controlling it here, and you'll see it active here over to our right. You'll see the numbers switch and change, which is pretty cool. This allows you to uh, you can go to any area if you want. It's really nice because you can actually slide it all the way over to the surface. You can get different type of changes. Alright, just wanted to show that to you guys and that's about it for this one and I'll go ahead and post it.